with a um, bar graph and a histogram, you can visualize the frequency information of data. Um, but there are other uh, visualization to summarize a data set in different ways uh, to understand the components of those um, other visualization. We need to first talk about you know, how to summarize the data with a few numbers. So in practice, any data set can be summarized with two numbers. Uh, where one representing the center of the data set and the other representing the spread of the data set. In any publication, it is pretty much a standard procedure to report a pair of one measure of central tendency and a measure of dispersion as a simple summary of data. Now we're going to discuss an important and basic uh, concept in statistics, which is called central tendency. Um, of which concept you may be already um, familiar with, but um, you simply may not have realized it, it was called central tendency. So there are many definitions of center of a distribution. Uh, typically, the following three central tendency measures are most frequently used in statistics mean, median, and mode. So first, um, the simplest central tendency measure is the mode, which is defined as the most frequent observation. This can be calculated for any levels of measurement, as counting is all that is required to calculate the mode. In case of categorical data, such as nominal or ordinal levels of measurements, the calculation of the mode is quite straightforward. However, with continuous data such as interval or ratio levels of measurement, where the data are measured with many decimal places, the frequency of each value is typically one because uh, the same score is rarely obtained more than once, if any. So for example, if um, you measure glucose concentrations of different people, and this is a measure with like a two decimal precision, then no two concentrations would be exactly the same. Then how do you calculate the mode when every score has a frequency of one? And the solution to this problem is to compute the mode from a grouped frequency table and draw a histogram. As mode is the most frequent observation in the data set, the mode is the value at the peak um, in the histogram. So here is an ex um, example histogram of some exam scores. And if you look at uh, the histogram, the histogram is picking at um, around like a score 50, right? So you can say that the mode of this exam scores uh, of this data is 50. Depending upon the number of outstanding peaks in a histogram, a distribution may be called bimodal when there are two peaks um, like this, or um, a distribution is called multimodal when there are more than two distinct peaks, uh, like in this case. Another central tendency measure is median, uh, which is uh, literally means the middle score. By definition, median is the value that divides the data into two groups containing an equal number of observations, because you need to be able to rank order between the values to calculate the median. Um, you can only calculate this quantity for the ordinal or above levels of measurement. And you cannot calculate median for the nominal. So that, what that means is that you cannot calculate the median for the nominal level of data. And by the way, please note that uh, I'm going to use a different data set here than the previous visual QT1 uh, for the uh, illustration purposes. So the data here are the uh, number of Facebook friends your fr uh, Facebook friends have. So if you do have a Facebook account, then you probably know uh, what this is, right? So if you have an account, then you can go to your Facebook friends for a profile to find out how many Facebook friends each of your Facebook friend has, right? So this is the data um, taken 
it is kind of a hypothetical data. Say, you know, this is coming from my own Facebook. And then these are the, so let's just say that I only have 11 um, Facebook friends. And these numbers represent how many uh, Facebook friends my Facebook friends have. So to calculate the median, then you need to sort the data first. Right? Um, then find the score, splitting the number of data into lower and upper equal halves. So here we have an odd number of data, right? 11. So n, in this case, n, well, n. Eleven, right? So you only have to find uh, the middle number, and so the middle number here is ninety-eight, right? That's because from ninety-eight above and below you have five and five, right? So we have exactly the same number of data, five and five above and below this value of 98 right so in this case the median so i will say this is a median one is so this is our median value 98 right so now you think you know that the, the one of your friend is a kind of oddball um, as that person seems to have an unrealistic number of friends so I'm talking about this one, right? So over 2,000 Facebook friends. So it seems like uh, this friend is a celebrity or something. So you want to calculate the median again after you remove this celebrity friend. Okay, so you just remove this. Okay. Now, then the number of Facebook friends, I mean, the, the, the size of the data, right? The, the number of sample in this data set is now becomes 10. Right? So now we have even number of data. Then how do we calculate the median? So in this case, um, what? Right. Um, You need to find out um, two middle scores, splitting the number of data into same lower and upper halves, and calculate the average of the two scores. So if you just look at this data now, these two scores are two middle scores, right? So from these two scores, we have four and four here, right? So the median is just average between these two numbers divided by two, okay? So that's, and it's 191, two, so that's 95.5. So that is our median number two. So that's just a median without this extreme score, right? But if you compare this value, 95.5 and 98, so regardless of the extreme value uh, or the outlier in a data set, um, the median doesn't really change much, right? So in fact, this is one of the properties of a median that you know, this central tendency measure is relatively unaffected by the extreme values or outliers at either end of the data. All right, so last central tendency measurement is the mean, um, also known as the average. Um, there are different kinds of means um, we can calculate, but here, we will only talk about the most commonly known arithmetic mean. 
uh, because this is probably the most frequently reported central tendency measure in statistics for interval and ratio level of measurement. Um, I'm pretty sure that you know you all know how to calculate the mean, but here we have a formula to calculate a sample mean. So here the x bar, so that's how you read it. X bar is a sample mean. Right? And that equals to, and this symbol here is Greek letter. It's a it's kind of a same as it's a similar to the capital S, and this is red sigma sig. Right, and in mathematics, uh, mathematics and the statistics, this symbol sigma means adding or summing what's coming on the right, right? So whatever comes on the right of this symbol means add all the numbers on the right. So I here is have an index of data. So add the data from the first data to the n which is the last member of the data. So add from the first data to the end. That's what it means. All these are subscript and superscript, right? So that has to do with the data index here. So from I equals one to N. So here, if we look at this data, right? Up here, this number of Facebook friends. So we have the first data I, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we have uh, eleven data. So you add the first data, which is fifty-seven, to the last n equals eleven, which is twenty-two. So you add them all up to calculate the simple mean. Plus, 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 plus. Right, so you add all these up, and then what do you do? And to calculate the, just erase this. After you add those numbers, now you divide this by the number of score, which is eleven, right? Then you're gonna get the sample mean. So the sum, right, so it's the sum of all data equals actually 3051. So you can use your calculator to see if this is correct, but the total uh, um, sum of the score is 3151 and we have and equals 11. So x bar equals and 3, 1, 5, 1 over 11. And this will be 286.45. So that is how we calculate the mean. Now, just for the sake of the illustration, because we just did this to calculate the median. Now, let's say you do not want to include that celebrity friend. Okay, so you remove remove this friend and do the calculation again. Right, so you just Add all the numbers except for that large number. So you do this sum again. That's sum one and sum two. It will become 811. Now our n becomes 10, right? Because we remove one out of 11 data. So the n is now, so that's x bar one. X bar 2 becomes 811 over 
10. Right? So that's 81.1. Right? So if you compare these two, you can see that there's quite a lot of change, right? Uh, depending upon uh, the existence of outlier or the extreme value. So unlike median, mean, the mean is heavily uh, influenced by extreme values or outliers.